Welcome back to The Breakfast on Class TV Africa. We head straight to checking out the front pages of our national dailies. GD Johnson joins us. I start off with the Guardian newspaper this morning and let's find out what's making it on the Guardian newspaper. All right, the bold story says, intrigues us, please parade 14 alleged invaders of Odile's home. That's the bold caption. I, 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 I perceive that it might dominate all of the headlines. Says journalists, lawyer, police officers, soldiers among suspects. Federal government bullying judiciary to install, instill fear ahead of 2023 elections. We care alleges. Uh, that's uh, what you find on the Guardian newspaper this morning. Resign now or get sacked, agreed APC stakeholders tell Boni Committee. That's on page uh, three. And still looking at the front page of the Guardian. Research Institute begin indefinite strike over government's alleged refusal to honor 10-year impact. Another caption on the Guardian newspaper this morning. Headers kill eight Zangon Katafa native and injures others. Uh, you also have UBA rejects. I take that again. Uba rejects election results and may go to tribunal. Uh, okay, another interesting caption on the Guardian newspaper. You also have 24 million people living with diabetes in Africa, says WHO and IDF. And uh, just before I move away from the Guardian newspaper, troops bust 20 illegal refinery site and recover crude. That's the much we can take on the Guardian newspaper this morning. Daily Independent. It says, the raid on Justice Odili's home, AGF Malami rattled as CSP claims he works for him. Mm. Police arrest and parade CSP and 13 others over invasion. Suspect linked to raid, not our staff, says this day newspapers. Also, bandits invade FUT, Mina, and uh, host community kill one, abduct two. I neck to present a certificate of return to Soludo today. Says Anambra gubernatorial poll held under trying circumstances. Also, progressives are waiting for you, Lawan tells Abia governor. We can also find here jail breaks. 3,906 inmates on the run. 954 recaptured, says minister. Airport concession. Falona asks Sirika to disqualify three firms over RFO. And Andy Uba rejects Anambra gubernatorial poll. Says it did not reflect the wishes of Anambra voters, accuses INEC and security agencies and APGA of massive fraud. The Daily Trust newspaper this morning, Justice Orderly, prime suspect, Malami trade words. It's boldly written. And you also find uh, the writer saying, I consult for the AGF. He's drowning. That's what the minister is quoted to say. Whistleblower claims I am prayer warrior. We'll get to the root of the matter, MBA says. Uh, this is some of the uh, headlines on the Daily Trust. And another one says, shippers to cut demorage empty containers charges after strike threat. Buhari cautions world leaders against hoarding COVID-19 vaccines. 13 Nigerians die in Niger Republic, gone mine collapse. And uh, missing Vanguard reporter found dead. That journalist, quite sad, uh, you know, for the entire community. Nigerians can look after themselves if infrastructure is in place. That's what the president is quoted to say. And 5G has no health effect to reduce data costs. That's what the NCC is quoted to say. Uh, that's the much we can take on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And quickly on the nation, uh, governors, AGF Malami working for consultants. Uh, war over Paris Club refund uh, rages. $7 million for two-page letter raises dust. Seven million dollars for two-page letter raises dust. Minister insists states and local governments can't back out. We can also see here Andy Ubai rejects Anambra governorship results. And uh, also infrastructure will help Nigeria grow faster. Why our debt profile is rising, that's from the federal government. And also fake CSP and cleric among alleged invaders of Odile's home. J.D. Uh, Johnson, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Very interesting so stories uh, across the papers this morning. Yeah, the stories are, well, but I, I guess um, the general story is the issue of um, the invasion of justice of the respond, and then two of the stories are tied to 
But the major idea is attached to the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of Federation. But let's start with the story of justice, of it, which is important to the sanctity of our democracy and the sanctity of our mental health. And because that invasion assaulted and assuaged the feelings of a lot of Nigerians, because we have seen a consistent pattern under this present administration for an attempt to be made to assert the judiciary. They don't forget the fact that four justices of the Supreme Court houses were raided prior to 2019. And then towards the day, end of 2019, the, the, the chief justice of the Federation of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I, an independent arm, was subjected to this kind of treatment. Now we are witnessing this and we are seeing a situation where that they are telling us in the federal capital territory of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that some 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 criminal elements, some state elements, we parade themselves as state institution to harass the justice of the Supreme in actual sense, the second highest ranking member of the Supreme Court by no state actors are criminal elements and fingers are being pointed at the chief law officer of the state and they are parading this suspect and the, the, we are seeing um, count acquisition the minister will say the suspect said I'm working for you and the minister is saying that oh you know what you are a drowning man in this in actual sense this will have even made that a mere allegation this very allegation is leveled against your chief law officer, the attorney general of the federation, cause for him to even resign. There's, there's no debate about it. It is will cause for him to step down until, because whatever investigation you are doing, with respect to this matter, we get to his table. How can the attorney general be the judge, as well as the accuser and the prosecutor of his own? Of his own, of his own case, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. That's it. So it is easier. If that could happen to a chief, to a justice of the Supreme Court, that means that it could happen to you, it could happen to me, it could happen to anybody. And I remember the national military program that we had in this country one time, and they said, "If it be you." So I'm saying to everyone that is watching and to everyone that is listening that if it be you, that this could happen to. That people could use non state actors and those non state actors who parade themselves as state actors and then they will be lead to the attorney general of Jerry Johnson. Do, do we? Jerry Johnson, apologies. Yeah. Apologies. I just wanted to ask do we really believe that narrative? And then second, how how did they get a search warrant or what or, or whatnot from the from the uh, from the court? It means that we have rogue institutions. Our institutions have gone rogue. Our institutions have gone rogue. Um, where, um, where they got, would you say they are not part? We saw, we saw clips of this thing. How could they do that in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the dead of the night? How? Except that some people are being used as scapegoats. And for, for some of us, we always have an alternative viewpoint because it's very, very important. When we are dealing with the issue of the state, you must have an alternative viewpoint. Because if you are a student of history, I did history while I was doing my own, so I study history. History is an account of what happened in the past. We give you an understanding of the past to make sense of the present in order for you to predict the future. That's what history does for you. So if you are a student of history, and then if you read espionage novels, and if you read espionage movies, and if you see movies, you understand what is being out that sometimes state institutions have some work elements, and when it goes out of out of context, you have sacri you have sacrificial you have sacrificial labs. Read the Moon's novels, read for the foresight novels, and you see how security agencies of the states are used to fight internal wars. So it is not new to some of us that study this tree. It is not new for some of us that have an understanding of strategic studies. It is not new for some of us that have read books about war and politics over, over time. So now, well, allegedly, these are not police people. Allegedly, these are not 
people working for the state that are aware that could be scapegoat is there for us to, to understand. But we can have a situation whereby the attorney general will, super, will superintend over this investigation. Issue, 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 let us himself. You, should, you know what happened under Trump? Um, I can't remember the name of the Attorney General now. Just sessions. When they were investigating the issue of Russia, what have you? He stepped aside. So the Attorney General should step aside. There are a lot of things going on concerning him. And these people that are being paraded, who are they? What are they? They should provide us with details of the antecedent so that we have a clear understanding. And these people should be brought to court. But you know what? The investigation will go on and on and on because the moment it leaves the police and it goes to court, it is in the hands of the court. And I think the judiciary should assert its own independence. A, a, a well-grounded judiciary will not entertain any case from the federal government. We will not entertain any case. We will not entertain any case from, 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 from the presidency. A well-grounded judiciary will not entertain anything whatsoever from, from the attorney general office. This, this is this is quite disheartening that we have a situation whereby you have people that have no instrumentality of the state, that has no backing of the state, that has, will now go and use the instrumentality of the state to harass, intimidate, and assault the justice of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of oh. Nigeria. And you could see the police and the inspector general police. All right, the let's, police let, and, let, the, and the attorney general exchanging, exchanging, um, it's, it's, it's sad, it's sad. You should, you should, you should never be threatening him or what have you. We've got your ventures. We should be Okay, uh, uh, let's quickly, uh, let's quickly yeah, also, um, um, you know, look at it. It's more like a follow up to that, but it's on the Guardian newspaper this morning. The federal government bullying the judiciary to instill fear ahead of 2023 elections. I mean, According to the governor of River State, yes, we saw that trend. We saw that trend towards 2019 elections. Towards 2019 elections, when the houses of four justices of the Supreme Court were raided, four of the houses were raided. The, the houses were the four justices of the Supreme Court. The houses were raided. So we are we are we are beginning to see a pattern, a pattern that we didn't even see that pattern. A pattern that we did not even see under Buhari. A pattern that we did not that we believe can never happen in Nigeria. What the military did to stifle the judiciary under them is to have Astar clauses. Those Astar clauses are that, you know what, the court cannot make any pronouncement concerning this. The houses of Supreme Court justices were not invaded. Were not invaded. This is a capillageous. And to tie this with a story which you shared before, which was not in the papers, that the Minister of the Minister of uh, Labor and Productivity is complaining that Nigerians are leaving the country. Oh, well, he uh, should ask himself, because as a student of history, I knew who was the head of state when Nigerians were leaving this country in 1984. And the same condition that existed then, and the same conditions are repeating itself now. That's what we call history repeat itself syndrome in history. So, so it's, 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 it's clear. These people have no democratic values. They have no respect for democratic institutions. They don't believe that since they control the state, the state institution, they are personalized state institutions. And I remember in 2018, I remember 2018 after the NBA conference, when the president gave a speech and he said, we of you will be subjected to national security and national interest. And I said, no. And I said, no, there is not being called national interest. The national interest is the citizen interest, it's public interest. It's not the personal interest of the president or his agent or the agent of the state. We have not a sacrosanct equality before the law, supremacy of the constitution. Now, in this regards, I respect for institution, fundamental human right. Every citizen has a right. All right, Jude Johnson. And this is this is this is this is pathetic. Now, as I did, if you link this story to an economic story, which is the story of the Paris Club Fund reform, where the governors are saying that um, they are not going to return, then the minister insists that the the the, the governors will reform the loans they collected. Yes. And the local government cannot back out, and then the 
we, the owners are saying that the attorney general is working for consultant. Can you imagine? And then you read a, a, a byline of that story that a, a, a writer to that story that says that seven million dollars for two page letter. I saw your shock and embarrassment for this nation. And the story revolves around who again, Osaru. Mercy. Please have mercy on me. The story revolves around who again. At the same age. Around yeah. the Attorney General. Can you imagine? It revolves around the Attorney General. Can you imagine? You recall the war between the Attorney General and the former EFCC chairman. Recall the war. Why is everything around this attorney general? I don't understand, and I don't know. Well, J.D. Johnson, let, let's let's um, because because of time. Like this particular story. Hmm? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I, I was going to say because of time. Let, let, let's uh, let's let's leave Malami Malami alone briefly because of time, and go to uh, Anambra State where Andy Uba has rejected the outcome of the the uh, Anambra elections, and of course uh, he's saying that he will. Uh, approach the court. He says it's on, it's on the nation. It says Andy Uba rejects an Umbra governorship results. Um, I think the um, the uh, Daily Independent also carried it. Yes, it says Andy Uba rejects an Umbra gubernatorial. It says it did not reflect the wishes of an Umbra voters, accuses INEC security agencies and APGA of massive fraud. That's also on the Daily Independent's top left uh, corner. Uh, let, him go, let him go to court and prove his case. The courts are there for him to prove his case. He has the evidence. Let him show, but um, to a large extent, um, the election was transparent enough for everybody to see. But if he is agree, he should approach the court. Alec is going ahead to date to award the certificate of return to say they are going to give so the certificate of return. Um, the election in Anambra was a relief to everybody. We are told that there will be an election, um, pre election, um, stakes were high, the violence, the threat of violence, the threat of no election and the rest of it. And the election has come and gone. And then we saw how the election went because there was a major spotlight on. And, and to a large extent, INEC did fairly well, um, fairly well with respect to that election. But I've argued that the issue of these supplementary elections um, uh, are antithetical to the Nigerian Constitution. Section 179 of the 1999 Constitution has amended, makes explicit for provisions for rule to be declared as the governor. This supplementary election, if we have it in the national election, it will create problem. I've highlighted that over and over and over again. Anything that runs contrary, any act that runs contrary to the constitution, the constitution takes precedent over, over, over that. When we are going for an election, everybody should know to vote, and we shouldn't know the result of the election until the result is announced. Once you start announcing the results, some people should not vote again. These votes have been corrupted because their mind has already been made up with respect to who they are going to. And then there's an issue related to that, which is some members are calling for the resignation of the Katika um, chapman of the EPC, that um, the way has handled the party, the Congress is under the issue. It's, it's, it should be good that we're for the EPC, that they are operating, they are having an, they're having a, an unconstitutional system, and it will affect you. If you don't put your house on it, it will affect you. Two elections have come and gone under Gumi, and Gumi has left that election. They had two elections, and the and the and the um, and um, the Anambra election. How did they manage it? The elections should have a post button, and they for them to have an understanding of whether what, what the arrangement they have is working for their party or is working against their party. They need to have a clear understanding of what they are doing with respect to that. Some of course for this election. But for, for as far as I'm concerned, that system is an illegal system. A party cannot be run in an interim manner. A party should have a structure. Now, if you have people that do not have respect for the concern of their party, they will never have respect for the concern of Nigeria. We have that's that's it. We have just asked us to move away from the EGF. We keep going back to him. Everything is over. And this committee was formed in by the EGF in the state house of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That's an impeachable offense. In pitiful offense for the Attorney General, in pitiful offense for the President of the Federal Republic, using the resources of the state to promote and propagate his party's agenda. And not only that, it's all the governors that are committing this crime, putting the flag of their party behind them in the state house. The state, the flag that should be in the state house of, 
all state house in our local government should be the flag of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not the flag of any party. That's the constitutional issue. That's an impeachable offense. If they are doing it today and they are getting away with it, tomorrow we'll get to the point that we will use that to impeach them from office. When the level of political education and sophistication has gotten to, to a certain degree. So let me you go to court, he has the right to go to court. Let him go to court. The court will rule that the election is um, is sacrosanct. But we hope that we will have a situation of what we have in Imo State, and whereby the person that came forth was declared as a governor, and reserve sheet were brought that were signed on papers, on, on, on sheet of paper, and were used to declare the winner of the election. In the election whereby we have the first the winner, the first one now, and the second one now were not declared as winner, and then the fourth one as declared. And that's the reason why the judiciary itself is to put us in order. They need to assert their independence, and they need to be just and to be fair. If All right. Uh, G.D. Johnson, let's uh, move away from Anambra State and also uh, look at the concerns of Mr. President. He cautions world leader against hoarding COVID-19 vaccines. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. It's, uh, it's yes, not very clear, you. but go ahead. Is a result of the judiciary not asserting itself over time. We have to do this vaccine master, and this vaccine master itself is consuming the judiciary itself. So the judiciary needs to take. They need to stand back and look at what do we need to do to help do this particular. This particular um, system. The right. is an institution. The government is an institution. Let me link this story, please. Just give me. Let me link this story to the National Assembly. Because we are talking about this one. The National Assembly is using 60 million plus dollars to build solar system. 60 something million dollars. I'm trying to look for that story. To build solar system for the National Assembly. I'm trying to, 62 for solar power project, 62 million dollars on Saturday, 62 million dollars for solar power project, for the nationals, 62 million dollars. And is that my comment? All right, let's check out the Daily Trust for the want of time. G.J. Johnson. Uh, right. Let's yeah. let's look at the Daily Trust newspaper this morning, and uh, the president raised concerns, and he said uh, that world leaders he was cautioning world leaders against hoarding COVID nineteen vaccines, and we have seen that especially for the continent of Africa, it feels like you know uh, the vaccines been hoarded. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the when we have the politics in Africa. So why are we complaining about them all being vaccinated? The world leaders, do you think that the device is the case? Africa we have given vaccines to other part of the world. Do we have the spirit of philanthropy in Africa? Most of the vaccines we have received in Africa are donations from these Western Western countries. They are donations. They didn't know they were they were donations from these Western countries. In simple terms, I think the story of the president was 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 not properly framed. I think the president is asking for more help. From, from the Western leaders that they need to do more than what they have done. What we have seen, we have been enjoying the largesse of, of the Western world in terms of um, this COVID vaccine. If they have left it for African countries, all that have happened to it, well, the little one will, will, have, will have purchased, will have been used to service the top echelon or probably the 5-10% of the society that are made from the, from, from the world of this nation. Every quality we have it is there now. Nobody has been prosecuted. We have moved on with that story. Nobody is talking about it again. We saw what happened. Western world gave palliatives, gave relief packages, welfare packages to their own citizens. Uh, we, we, we said we are creating a cashless, cashless economy. We saw the Minister of Monetary, Monetary Services sharing money, sharing money physically in Abuja, sharing money across the state. And we didn't even know those that collected the money. Palliatives that are meant for the people who are dead and they are complaining about all the numbers. You know, they give us the vaccine. What will happen to the vaccine? You might even take the vaccine somewhere and be selling it. Oh, we should uh, be, uh, just, as, to, as just to mention. Right now, right? But we should not be waiting for Western world to give us the vaccine. We should be able to purchase it. Government should be able to. Nigeria has gone to Africa. We have the data of Africa. 
You can't be better as an Africa. It, it insults my sensitivity and my sense of patriotism to see my country begging, begging for percent. That saying that we could on our own produce if we are provided the the, the, the enabling environment. Well, and if, if you if you remember the, the Nigerian government had voted ten billion naira for vaccine development here in Nigeria. I'm not sure if they eventually released those funds. Uh, but it was a time that they mentioned that there was a 10 billion naira uh, allocation for vaccines uh, to develop our own vaccines. Well, 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 well that's, um, that's what we see. We just said money has been, money have been voted. At the moment, it's bust. There's a lot of voting. There is a particular training I love going for journalists. It's budget, 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 monitoring and tracking. Tell me the money. Tell me the money. The interesting thing is that we don't show, we don't track the budget. Once budget is presented, we look at budget presentation, and as the budget is presented, after it is presented, we wait until the following year to wait for another deliberation so that the budget, and then we don't track the money. We just we need to track the money. This is the social money was allocated the last year budget. Okay, how much of the money that is bought, how much are released, what percentage that aspect in business? Reporting, in monitoring the economy, tracking the budget. We don't track. And I ask you, okay, you don't get that money to do social certain projects. How much of it are released? You will be shocked that the money you are budgeted on paper, you are not actually released. Okay. Uh, let's quickly see if we can, uh, you know, just show your thoughts on this one as we coast it down now. Um, there's also another caption that says that 13 Nigerians die in the Nigerian Republic gold mine collapse. Um, 13 Nigerians. That's why we are. Um, we, you know, we it's on the Daily Trust. Yes, um, relationship with Nigeria Republic. That's why we are constructing really from from Kano to Maradi in Nigeria Republic. We are not constructing really from Calabar to Lagos or from Krakow to Lagos. And look at the business it will provide for the economy of Nigeria. It's unfortunate that we lost 13 Nigerians and made us when they are so resting. In perfect, in perfect, in perfect, uh, in perfect peace. And I think that the Nigerian ambassador, the Nigerian Republic, should ask questions with respect to what led to the death of those Nigerians and Republic of Benin. And what kind of compensation and the, the company that employed them is making, is providing for the family of these Nigerians that have lost their life in an unfortunate circumstance. And that's that's my take on that. Uh, on that is 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 sad. Is pathetic. But the great grand the family is forced to, to bear the loss of their of their breadwinners. They've lost their breadwinners and that family should not be left in the ambassador of Nigeria to make the report to ask question with right. respect to that. That's why it's the ambassador of Nigeria to the report. Judy Johnson, it's uh, always very interesting listening to you. Thank you so much for your Friday morning analysis of the it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be with you and Mercy. And uh, Mercy, thank you for having Mercy on me. Right. as always, thank you for <laughs> Have a great weekend. Thank you very much. All right. And now we're moving all the way to 2004 to share with you a little bit of history. Um, this, of course, is you know story concerning a crime of passion, as it would you know it would seem. A man called Scott Peterson was on this day convicted of murdering his wife and their unborn baby in California. This happened in 2004. It was a jury of six men and six women delivering the verdict 23 months after Lacey Peterson, who was pregnant, disappeared on Christmas Eve in California. The case captivated millions across America and uh, saturated national media coverage for almost two years. Uh, the bodies of Lacey and her baby were found washed up on the shore where Scott Peterson kept his boat on April 13th and 14th in 2003. Within a week, he was charged with two counts of first-degree murder with a special circumstance of uh, double homicide, which opened the doors for prosecutors to, to seek the death penalty. He was then arrested in San Diego, uh, carrying large amounts of cash and, her, and his brother's passport with a new hair color and a new haircut. Um, of course, uh, he eventually pleaded not guilty, uh, but of course that didn't go so well. Prosecutors introduced 174 witnesses and hundreds of pieces of evidence designed to paint Scott Peterson as a cold and heartless man who continued to lie and cheat on his wife, even as he appeared on television feigning despair over her disappearance. He was formally sentenced to death by lethal injection after his uh, trial.
But that's the story of uh, Scott Peterson and uh, his wife, Lacey Peterson, and their baby. Really sad. Once again, uh, either a crime of passion or a crime of just greed. It's a crime. Uh, yeah, useless husband. Pray against such husbands. Definitely. <laughs> we're going to go on a short break. When we come back, we're looking uh, deeper into the invasion of Justice Miriam Dili's residence. And of course, the uh, different stories coming from the police, the NBA, the AGF, and the crime suspects. We'll talk about it after this break.